Seven people, including foreign tourists, have been killed after gunmen opened fire in a popular tourist resort in Tunisia. We can now cross live to our correspondents in Cairo, Bell, True, who can give us more details. Well, thanks for joining us. Do tell us what you hear. What is the very latest that you have for us at this point since we've last spoken to you? Well, the very latest is that at least one of the gunmen has been killed by security forces. I just spoke to an eyewitness at the scene who's on the beach in this coastal town area called Sous, and he told me that the terrorist was between the ages of 20 and 30 years old, dressed all in black, and was wearing no shoes, was carrying a Kalashnikov and several grenades. So we now know that at least 27, as you said, tourists have been killed in what seems to be several explosions and uh, the use of gunfire at the same time. We do don't know who's behind the attack so far. No one has stepped forward, but the security forces have kept tourists inside the hotels and have started a manhunt um, to find basically who's responsible for this. Helicopters are circling above heads uh, uh, you know, in the area, um, and we'll have to see really how this goes uh, in the next few hours. Well, Bella, we are hearing different accounts now and witnesses uh, from the scene. Uh, can you tell us any more uh, about that? I mean, do you have that information uh, available? Well, what we have heard is that the terrorists may have attacked the hotels. And there's one particular hotel in, in, that was attacked called the Imperial Mahaba Hotel, which is a five-star resort, very popular with families. They may have come from the sea, eyewitnesses are saying, although we cannot verify any of this information so far. But the terrorists apparently came from the sea, attacked the beach as uh, the holidaymakers were sunbathing and swimming, um, basically completely unguarded. People ran to the hotels. Many were hiding in their hotel rooms. Some some people ran to the roof um, in a bit to you know, hide, but basically, you know, the death toll is obviously very, very high. As I said, we don't know who is responsible for um, you know, the killings, if they belong to one of the group, but it does follow similar terror attacks in Tunisia. Very recently in March, the Islamic State group uh, claimed responsibility for a, um, a killing in the Badu uh, Museum in Tunis, where over 21 people were killed when gunmen opened fire on tourists. Mostly Europeans were killed in that particular time. Attack. So we know at the moment that the government in Tunisia is, is desperately trying to find out who's responsible and just hoping this isn't just another Islamist terror attack in Tunisia that seems to be rocked by these uh, extremist um, events. All right, Bell, thanks for uh, updating us and bringing us uh, more information on uh, the situation. As you said, the investigation is ongoing. And let's now uh, look at some of the personal accounts from uh, the scene of the attack and that are already reaching uh, the media. And uh, one British tourist uh, said he was uh, uh, near the swimming pool when he heard a large explosion. Guests then began to run and uh, panic was spreading fast. He also told the media that uh, his son saw someone shot on the beach. The hotel ordered uh, uh, the, the guests to lock themselves in their rooms and another tourist who is an Irish woman on holiday with her two sons described how she grabbed her children and ran for their lives when they heard gunfire erupting from one of the hotels. Well, this isn't the first time the tourists have been affected in Tunisia. In March, 22 people were killed when a group of gunmen attacked a museum in the capital. Most of the dead were foreign visitors. Islamic State claimed responsibility and vowed further violence. And earlier this month, five people were injured when terrorists tried to attack an ancient Karnak temple in Egypt. Security forces shot dead one of the militants while another managed to detonate his explosive belt. One other person was arrested. Well, earlier uh, I talked to Bitty Davis, a political commentator and uh, lecturer, and uh, he gave me some insight as to what he thinks needs to be done to solve the problem on so many levels, in fact. And uh, now, uh, thank you so much, uh, Bitty, for uh, returning to um, to us here at TU International. Let's uh, continue discussing the yeah. uh, attacks both in France and Tunisia and the possible implications. Well, let's start uh, with uh, uh, Tunisia. And as I said earlier, um, it's not the first time that the tourists have been attacked in uh, this country. We saw an assault in a museum uh, earlier in uh, March. So why is it that the tourists are being singled out there? Any thoughts on this? 
basically tourists are the soft targets you see i mean uh, in, in there is a, there, there it's been going on since for, for quite some time now that the westerners are uh, portrayed as anti-islamist anti-islamic um, uh, population to the vast majority of population across the middle east and other muslim countries because um, in the western world there is a practice of free thinking there is practice of free life that is not consistent with the fundamentalist islamist views and which makes uh, it easier for these terrorists to convince uh, th their followers um, and if they wanted to um, to attack the Western interests, they could find these two tourists as soft target, and that, that may be one of the reasons. But you know, um, the tourists that uh, were in the hotel, they were not uh, just foreign tourists. The tourists come uh, to Tunisia from the region as well. So uh, chances are that uh, some of them may have been uh, attacked. And I just just wanted to ask you perhaps a broader question here: uh, What message uh, could the terrorists be sending to, say, the people in the region to the? neighboring countries of Tunisia and uh, the rest of the world, given the timing of this attack, given the fact that it happened in the holy month of Ramadan. Interestingly, though, I mean, I don't have any statistics handy, but if we look back the history of these terrorist attacks in the last 10, 15 years, perhaps we will find that more Muslims have been killed by these terrorists than non-Muslims. And, and, uh, and, and that's, that's, that could be an interesting aspect of these terrorist attacks. I come from a Muslim-majority country, Bangladesh, where three freethinker bloggers were hacked to death uh, in the last uh, six months. And, and there, there is a growing concern in the liberal freethinking population across these Muslim countries that there could be uh, even more uh, uh, vicious and more widespread attack on them. So the broader picture is quite frightening. And even if uh, the, the Western world and the rest of the free thinking uh, community, if they do not take these into serious account right now, uh, we, we, we may see many more disasters in the coming days. Mm. Well, Bidet, you know, earlier with uh, the experts and political analysts, uh, we have discussed uh, the situation in uh, Europe, uh, whether uh, this attack will further um, alienate Muslims from non-Muslims and deepen the divide between different communities. But, um, you know, if we look at the situation there in the region in Tunisia and the neighboring countries, I just want to ask you a question about how uh, Muslims are reacting to terrorism and what are uh, their reactions to to what happened there, specifically uh, this uh, attack, and just in general, you know, to the rise of extremism. You see, when when a lone gunman in the, uh, in Finland or in Scandinavian country or in the U.S. goes out and starts shooting spree and kills um, white Christians, then the white community or the Christian community is not vilified, and normally the uh, the Christians don't take the blame on themselves. Likewise, general Muslims should not feel alienated, should not feel uh, um, guilty for these terrorist attacks. Rather, they should disown the Islam Islamic states, they should disown all sorts of fundamentalist and medieval philosophies, and they should come up and say that, okay, we are the citizens of this uh, free world, we are the citizens of this modern world, and we have our own ethos, and we would like to live the life like the rest of the worlds do. And that's the way the Muslims should react. They should not feel guilty for what they haven't done. Right, but a day political commentator and lecturer, thanks for giving us uh, your thoughts here on IT International. Very much appreciated.